Hello YouTube, I'm no Adam Savage, but today we're going to do a one day build. So what are we building today? Well, as I talked about in my last update, I wanted to get a tool chest that can house all of my camera gear. A couple different reasons for this. One, uh, it is a rolling workstation uh, with a nice flat top so I can use this to either store my camera gear, I can put my laptop on it and kind of turn it into a little tethering station, or I could even turn this into a tabletop uh, shooting surface and shoot things directly on it. Maybe even lay a sweep of paper there's so many possibilities but um, the last studio that I worked in had these rolling chests essentially for all of their gear and it's a great idea so I wanted one so what are the things that we need in this well I do have a lot of other storage around here as you can see so actually first let's start by talking about how gear was stored and now how it's going to be stored, what the difference is, and why we're doing a build today. So I used to store all of my gear into just camera bags, right? I had my one camera bag, and then I started filling it up with lenses and bodies, and then all of a sudden I started to have enough gear that it didn't all fit in the camera bag. So what then? Well, you'll see YouTubers that have camera closets or camera shelves, and all of their lenses are very neatly kind of stacked on the shelf, but uh, before I got this studio, I definitely did not have the space for that. Um, everything had to be as compact and efficient as possible. Uh, the pretty YouTuber studios, they don't know how to play Tetris, uh, except Casey Neistat, but we're not talking about him today. So... Um, what I'm going to do is, in this drawer, it is not quite where we want it yet, but we are going to put all of the lenses here. Unfortunately, they don't fit upright like that. It won't close. But uh, all of the stuff that I might need on a uh, shoot basis is going to be right here. And then we're going to have all of my triggers there. Of course, we're going to organize that. Uh, we're going to have all of my different lighting situations there. And there's going to be spots for um, all of my different reflectors. And uh, we're, I'm going to try and figure out what the rest of those drawers are going to be. But today, um, since this is a rolling tool chest and since the lenses cannot be stored upright, you can see that there, uh, they have to be stored down. So what we're going to do is we're going to build out some padding for these drawers. Now, this isn't just good for if you have a rolling cart, but if you have any kind of pull-out drawer, as you pull the drawer, stuff can wobble. What you don't want to happen is an impacted lens barrel by it just kind of rolling around and hitting on stuff, because then your lens won't function when you actually pull it out, and it will cost a lot of money to repair it. So, that's what we're working on today. Um, I picked up some materials, and let's get started. So let's talk about everything that needs to go into this drawer. So uh, all I want all of my camera gear, I want all of my lenses, and I want anything that I would be grabbing at kind of a moment's notice that I need to replace. So I also want to put in uh, my memory cards and my batteries. That's kind of going to fill this top drawer. There are a few lenses that I have that are not going to be in here. That is my 70 to 200 because that is just too physically large. That actually goes into a bottom drawer in here. And I also have my Lawa Pro Blends. That also has its own Pelican case, which is too large for this drawer. I have a couple of vintage lenses that hardly see any use. So those do not deserve top shelf placement. So this is kind of what we're working with. Um, and of course the camera that I'm recording on right now is going to go here-ish somewhere and I, because it is a mirrorless, I have a mirrorless adapter so I can use all of my good lenses on my mirrorless camera. So let's figure out where this goes and take it from there. So when I originally put all this stuff in, I was literally just trying to get it out of the moving box and put where it's supposed to go. Um, but now that I actually need to think about organizing it, uh, because I hold my camera in my right hand when I go to change a lens, the lens change, whoop, 
right there. The lens change goes with my left hand, which means that lenses should not be over here where I'll be blocking it. Lenses should actually be over here. So I think I did have that right. I want to move some of the camera bodies over. Um, and I'm not sure about uh, keeping the straps on or off. They're a little bit tedious. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm going to store that with the camera or not. But we'll figure that out. Let's put this body cap back on. So we're going to do lenses over here. Uh, maybe a camera body is right next to it with room for kind of some more lenses. Uh, maybe camera body is over here. But I definitely want to uh, put Canon stuff with Canon stuff and uh, my mirrorless stuff with the mirrorless stuff. So uh, maybe we'll start lenses on this side, uh, bodies over here, accessories in the middle so that uh, this middle spot can kind of merge as I either get more camera bodies or more lenses down the road. So it looks like I do actually have drawer depth clearance for my 7200. So we're gonna try and put this into the mix. One of the things that I don't want to do is here in the corner, I don't want to actually wedge that in there because even though uh, I said earlier, make use of all your maximum space, uh, that's gonna give us problems because we're gonna have a high drawer and this is gonna get stuck and we're gonna have problems kind of wedging that out of here once there's a wall right here that we can't move. So uh, there is tetracine and then there is tetracine smartly. If you've ever seen a drawer uh, next to a door and they stop each other from opening, that's what we're trying to avoid. So I think what I wanna do is put this near the back with something small next to it. So because this is my 7200 and this is my teleconverter, I think those pair nicely there in a row. So we're gonna do a row with just the two of them, I think. And even though my 50 technically fits this way, um, I think I want to leave enough room that I could set it down this way, even though I don't want it rolling, but it might be just easier to find the things that I'm looking for. Otherwise, which lens do you need? Um, because the lens caps don't always go back uh, in the same order. They should, but they don't. All right, I think I'm happy with this layout. So I am all ready to start cutting this out. We've got our marking tools, cutting tools, straight edge with the cork back so that it doesn't slip around. Uh, metallic so you can cut straight across the line. And I went and got some foam board there. All right, there you go. So we're just gonna use uh, some foam board because it's gonna be rigid enough uh, that, when st that it can hold its shape, but soft enough that it should not damage any of the equipment. So now it's just measuring and cutting. I'm done cutting up all my boards and I do have a fuzzy assistant here to help me with the rest of the video today. So here is kind of what we have. I got a nice outside lining, although uh, I need to get the proper kind of glue, so I don't think I'm actually gonna finish that today. Um, and I have all of these boards. So what I was thinking about doing is all of these boards fit nice and tight in there, is doing a crisscross so we notch it out here and notch it out here so that way this just kind of slides in just like that. Um, but I don't think 
I'm gonna finish that today. It's a little bit later. I've made some progress, done some cuts, bought some glue. Some of the things are kind of clamped together and drying. But I wanted to show you what we're doing here. So if you do a half cut slit like that and half cut slits right there on the other side, then you can just kind of slot these together and I'll show you what we get, right? Like that. There we go. Just kind of slots right in. It being a nice tight fit like this means that I probably don't have to glue it or worry about it coming apart. So that is just about, whoo, perfect. Just like that. And uh, I am gonna work on kind of connecting these, but for now, it's not half bad. And then we put a put a lens in there and a lens in there, and you can kind of see where I'm going with this. It is day two, and here is the finished drawer. Shooting this one with my cell phone because I want to show you all the cameras in their spot. So we have stuff for uh, all my video. I've got my 360 camera. Uh, the other batteries are charging for that. Uh, spot for extra batteries, memory cards, quick release plates. Um, I have my other Canon batteries. Again, all of the other chargers are in their station. And we have all of the lenses. So uh, very quickly, uh, we've got the wide angle, the uh, not quite as wide angle. Uh, I've got my zooms. Uh, oh wait, this one's actually, that's my wide angle. This one's actually my teleconverter. Uh, 7200, 50, 85, 100 macro, and everything is super easy to just grab and go. There you have it. There is the finished drawer with all the camera gear nice in its place. Um, as soon as I get around to unpacking everything else, I will uh, show you what all of those are. But I can't yet, because I haven't decided. Um, and then we have just about the right amount of leftover foam left. So if you enjoyed this video or quick tip, uh, let me know, give a like. Uh, let me know what kind of things you'd like to see out of the studio next. And I'll end plate. Uh, here's a video that YouTube thinks you'll like right there. And then here's, here's, here's another thing that you'll probably like. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.